Jesus said, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. In the name of Jesus, dear friends, it really is that simple. We can spend a lifetime pondering the mysteries of God's word and thinking about such things as how Jesus can be present in bread and wine in his supper, how God can be three persons, yet one God, the Trinity who we confess. We can puzzle over a lot of things, but... The one pure, simple thing is that we focus on Jesus, the one who came because God so loved the world. God so loved you. I don't hear it quite as much as you used to, but there was a time when people regularly spoke of the gospel in a nutshell. The summary of everything true and right from God contained in John 3.16. And when you take everything else away in the scriptures, but John 3.16... You have what God wants for every one of you. Now we need the other stuff. We need to be reminded that like Israel would sin against God, rebel against him, whine and complain to him, moan and bellyache. There's nothing to eat here. We're tired of this same old stuff. Which is obviously a contradiction because if this same old stuff is there, then there is something to eat. But... We have restless hearts and sometimes we get bored with what God wants to give us. We hear God's words of forgiveness too often. We think, well, do I really need that? I hear that all the time. Well, what else do you want to hear? That some Sunday you come in here and say, well, God stops loving you now. He is washing his hands of you. You are through your kaput. Get out of here. Don't you want the same old Jesus every time? Don't you want Christ crucified for you and for your family, your friends, for the entire world? We would hope so. Sometimes it's that way with baptism. People despise it because it's so plain and simple. Sometimes the Lord's Supper. Well, if I eat it every Sunday, it won't be special. Well, People were eating manna and quail every day, and they thought that wasn't anything special, even though it was being brought to them by God himself. Just like every Sunday, you're going to hear two things. And if you don't, you better come up here afterwards and say, Pastor, I didn't hear those two things. One, that I'm a sinner, and thank you for not detailing everything that's wrong for everybody else to hear, but also, my sins are forgiven in Christ. Whatever else you hear in God's house, you better hear that. Then we start building on that. Like Paul talks about, you were saved by grace through faith, not of your works. But we don't stop there, do we? Because Paul goes right on to say, because God saved you for works. Not because of your works, but so you could do works. God loves you, so now you can love other people. You could do the good of feeding the hungry, of clothing the naked, of putting roofs over people's head. And most of all, having pity on those who don't know about Jesus, and offering your gifts so that missionaries and others can carry God's word all over the world. So that evangelists can carry God's name into the heart of the cities. And so that somebody keeps telling us that same old story week after week. Jesus Christ suffered and died for you and for me. We have the term uplifting in detailing different stories, different accounts. If you hear an uplifting story, if you watch an uplifting movie or television show, that means that you feel better when it's over than when it started, right? If I tell you an uplifting story of some poor kid who had absolutely nothing, but he worked hard, he went to school, he brushed his teeth, whatever it was, he grew up, he invented something, and maybe he became filthy rich, maybe he just made a comfortable living, Maybe he made a difference for other people, but there's something about that story that makes us think that things don't have to stay the same. 
Yet when we read the Bible, we see things are always going to stay the same if we are not taken care of by somebody else because we are always going to be sinners. God has a different uplifting story, and it belongs to his son who himself is uplifted. Now, when Isaiah first quoted the Lord, take a look at my servant. Behold my servant who will prosper and be lifted up. At that time, as the people are hearing it, they're probably thinking, well, God's going to send his servant. He's going to be rich and famous, and everything's going to be wonderful. But that didn't happen that way, did it? The one who Isaiah is talking about as being lifted up is his son crucified for you and for me. Jesus is lifted up. He doesn't hoist himself up, but rather sinners lift him up. They mock him. They mock the God who sent him. But yet, just as Israel is saved by looking to the serpent, you are saved by looking to him. Because this uplift takes you out of the pit, out of hell itself. And not only sets you on a righteous path, but sets you in the presence of God. Do you want to be uplifted? Well, you pray that it's not like Jesus. You pray that you don't have to suffer that horrible death for yourself or anybody else. You pray that that uplift is enough to lift you up forevermore. That when he said, Father, forgive them, he wasn't just talking about the rabble below, but he was talking about you and me. And all those sinners who came before us and any who will be born after us. And when he said it is finished, he meant that he had finished the salvation of every sinner who ever lived, whoever will live, including us. Jesus is uplifted, and the scripture basically is the uplifting story. We have the rise and fall of kingdoms. We have people who prosper and are doing well and whose pride brings them down, and others who are lowly and humble, and all of a sudden God reaches in and raises them up. Look at Saul. He had it all. Rich, good-looking. Everybody wanted him to be the king, but he brought his own doom upon him by following his own heart. And we look at Mary. The woman who are anybody outside of her family even knew. And the Lord picked that humble woman and lifted her up so that still... All generations call her blessed because she is the mother of God himself. You don't know how God is going to humble you. You know you need to be humbled when you start getting too big for your sinful britches. But you know how he's going to uplift you. He's going to look at you and say, you are forgiven. There is not a spot, not a stain, not a blemish on you. I can't remember any of your sins, so you stop thinking about them. I can't see any ugliness in you. You are the most beautiful person imaginable. Because the uplift of Christ then brings the uplift of those who look to Christ. God raises us up. God heals us. God who allows bad to come into our lives so that we might not rebel against him then brings good into our lives that we might come closer to him all the time. Every step of the way, from here to eternal life, is a step taken with God. God will lift you up. You've seen the footsteps thing about how sometimes there's just the one set of tracks because God picks you up and carries you. Well, actually, for most of us, it's more like a bunch of drag marks. God takes us along sometimes kicking and screaming. If you want to see the sets of footprints quite often, one set's going that way and the other set's going over here someplace. But God, the good shepherd, always comes and brings you back to him. God does not want you out of his sight. God does not want you out of his presence. God wants you to be as uplifted in glory, in grace, and in peace as his son was uplifted in pain and suffering and shame. God wants you to be the one he celebrates. Look at my servant who prospers. You are high and lifted up. Because you are worth the life of Jesus himself. His blood, his body is what God values you as. That's what Jesus values you as. And as we focus on that, the prize of Jesus suffering and dying for us, Jesus focuses on us, the prize that he wins for suffering at all. You have Jesus because God gives him to you. And Jesus has you because he has taken you. He has won you, and he keeps you through the word, through the supper, and through the work of his Holy Spirit. Now, 
and forever. God grant you to trust in Jesus above everything else and live lives of love that you were created to in Christ Jesus. Amen. The peace that surpasses understanding keep you in Christ Jesus. Amen.